What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Canes Insight Daily Podcast. Got a great show for you today. Happy Friday. We're going to be talking about the Hurricanes invading the Midwest in recruiting. Multiple big-time guys in the mix, guys that are visiting this weekend, visited last weekend, visiting in the future, coming on campus or already on campus. A lot to talk about with the Canes and their Midwest recruiting strategy. Also, have a great interview with Miami Hurricanes wide receiver and Canes Connection athlete Ray Ray Joseph. Probably our favorite interview or one of our favorite interviews we've done. The guy was awesome. Gave us 18 minutes and it was just a ton of quotes. Canes fans, I guarantee you, you're going to love what you hear from Ray Ray Joseph. Canes fan, just like all of you guys. First, before we talk about the Canes invading the Midwest, want to talk about the attorneys that have Florida on lock, and that is Anajar and Levine Accident Attorneys. Dial 1-800-747-FREE, 1-800-747-3733. If you or someone you care about has been in an accident, you could be entitled to significant compensation. You want the absolute best that know the judges in Florida, know the case law in Florida, know how to handle an accident from beginning to end. Deal with the absolute best. And Ajar and Levine, take back control of your life. So we talked about the Midwest, why that's important to Miami's recruiting strategy. Let's start with what happened last year. You saw two five-star prospects, defensive line prospects, probably the most valuable position in college football, two five-star prospects from Chicago go to the University of Miami. That's Justin Scott, top 10 player nationally, and Marquise Lightfoot, another five-star player who dominated in the Army All-America game. That was a major statement for Miami. You saw Brett Belema, head coach at Illinois, getting in a tweet battle with Mario, which Mario ended pretty decisively when he posted the picture of the two top players in Illinois signing with Miami, the two I just mentioned. I expect this trend to continue. And just to give you an example, right now, coming on campus this weekend, Marion Dye, 6'5", 235-pound defensive end, maybe even a defensive tackle in the future, big body from Elkhart, Indiana. He is on an official this weekend. He'll be officially visiting May 31st. He is a four-star player. He's got offers from Ohio State, Tennessee. He's 187th overall as a player on the 247 composite. You're watching the film. You can see the size. You can see the athleticism. Again, playing the edge, but has that big body. When you think about the Midwest, size always is something you, you comes to mind. And Miami is doing its part to add size. Again, we mentioned last year, the two guys Miami signed, two five-stars, defensive linemen. You will notice when I go over this list of Midwest targets, a lot of defensive linemen on the list. The reason, a lot of these guys play basketball in the Midwest. They have great size, and they're very tough. So Midwest, you think tough, you think size, you think basketball. Great attributes for the defensive line. That's why you got guys like Mary and Dye, who you're seeing right now, again, visiting this weekend, major priority target for Miami, along with other priority targets. Another Midwest defense alignment I want to talk about from Oak Park, Illinois, Fenwick High School, and that is Nathaniel Marshall. He stands 6'4", 265. And we talked about athleticism, basketball players, right? Last year you saw Justin Scott, basketball player, 6'5", 310, ran the ball on offense, and then also played basketball and played defensive line. Nathaniel Marshall, who is a big, big-time player, one of the top players in the country on the composite, five-star borderline. Look at the highlights. He's playing wide receiver. He's catching fades. Of course, he's a great defensive lineman, 6'4", 265. Is he going to be an end? He's athletic enough to do it. Is he going to be a defensive tackle? He would be incredibly athletic at that position. He has the size to do that. Official visit schedule for June 21st, 2024 to the Miami Hurricanes. This dude is extremely, extremely talented, and Miami would love to add multiple big-time defense alignment from the Midwest for the second year in a row. You say, well, what about Notre Dame? What about Ohio State? What about Michigan? Some people just want to leave the cold. You know, that's the story of Miami, story of Florida. Florida was really built by Midwesterners, right? Look at the history of Florida. Look how many people came from Ohio and places like that to build Florida back in the early 20th century and the late 19th century. That is the story of Florida. LeBron James famously took his talents to South Beach, Ohio kid. People don't like the cold. My family, a lot of them moved to Toledo, Ohio for work and then came right back down to Miami once they could because of the heat. You saw me in the Toledo Mud Hens uh, shirt a couple shows ago. Have Toledo roots, but no one wants to be in Toledo when it gets cold. They want to be in Miami, Florida. So I think that's part of what you're seeing here. And again, I mentioned defensive linemen as the fri uh, priority. Yosef Epinesa, big 
top 100 stud player from Edwardsville, Illinois. He was on campus last week. Remains a major Miami target. Miami battling Iowa big time for Yosef Epinesa. Plays both sides of the ball. Throws and track. Plays basketball. That's the trend you're seeing. A lot of these guys are basketball players with size, with toughness, and with big, big time recruiting rankings. A couple shows ago, I talked about Brock Schott, the tight end from Leo, Indiana. Major priority for Miami. A guy they think could be a big time offensive weapon. Plays both sides of the ball. Notre Dame's recruiting him as a linebacker. Also played basketball from Leo, Indiana. What's the trend? Basketball, toughness. This is someone who would be on the offensive side of the ball, but brings that defensive line toughness, linebacker toughness to that position. So again, Miami's going to keep plugging away in the Midwest. And if you're living in the Midwest and you want to get Canes gear and you're not lucky enough to be in this beautiful weather we're in right now, go to caneswear.com. You can get all kinds of Canes gear, all kinds of Miami sports gear, whether it's Canes football, Canes basketball, Canes baseball, Heat, Dolphins, Marlins. You can get it at caneswear.com if you don't live here. And if you do, go to the store in Davie. Always a great time. The best customer service in the business. Ask anybody. They'll tell you. Caneswear, the spot where Miami fans shop. All right, now we're going to go to the interview with Canes Connection athlete Ray Ray Joseph. Those of you who are Canes Connection members, remember we're having the event right after the spring game at Titanic, the fifth quarter. I'm going to be doing a live pod with Pete. We're going to have Canes players there. If you're a Canes Connection member, you want to attend. It's going to be an awesome event right across the street from the spring game at Titanic. Food, you can get drinks there. There's going to be a lot of, of fun and community at uh, the fifth quarter in Titanic. If you're not a member of Canes Connection, please consider signing up. Canesconnection.com. Use promo code CIS. Get 20% off, and you get access to not only the fifth quarter event after the spring game, all the great Canes Connection uh, deliverables and great products that you will get opportunities you get. You also get access to a private zoom chat with me, non-public insider information. We'll be doing that regularly. I'll probably do it next week. Support the cause guys. Want these big Midwestern boys coming to Miami. It's going to cost some money. Sign up for Kane's connection and help make a difference. Now let's talk about Kane's connection athlete, Ray Ray Joseph. All right. Kane's fans. Very excited to be joined right now on the Kane's insight podcast by Kane's connection athlete, and Miami Hurricanes wide receiver, Nathaniel Ray Ray Joseph. Ray Ray, man, appreciate you taking some time today. I know Canes <laughs> fans are, you know, they're very excited about your talent on the field, but they hear so much about your personality, your character, mm -hmm. your work ethic, and all that. So excited to get to know you a little bit today. Yes, sir. Thank you. So let's get right into that work ethic, right? Everyone talks about it. We hear the stories of you sleeping in the facility <laughs> and waking up and all that. Right? So, yeah. I mean, talk to us about kind of where that comes from. I mean, who who instilled that in you? I mean, honestly, just growing up, you know, my dad and my parents, it was always like all it pays off. And then like me being my size, you know, I always felt like I just had to outwork everybody. So, I mean, that's really what like instilled that that hard work mentality and just, wanting to get after it and just get better. I mean, honestly, because when you work so hard and you're seeing it paying off for you, I mean, nothing feels better. And then, honestly, your teammates, when they see you working that hard, it makes them want to, you know, join on Ray. Man, I need to do what you're doing. And I need to come out there with you. And then now you're getting the whole team better. So now everybody getting better. And that's really just one of the things that, you know, I take from it. Like, I'm getting myself better, but I'm getting everybody else around me better. And it's just building great habits for, you know, life after football, just becoming a man, being a husband and, being a, a you know a great role model in the community and just being that great father figure, I mean, it that's what that's what it comes from the hard work. So just having that work ethic, you know, it pushes everybody and just make you a better person, honestly, for the long term. And it's not just the football stuff, right? We hear about you in the classroom as well, mm -hmm. and that sets the example, right, mm -hmm. for the for the rest of the, the your teammates and the and the people yeah. around you. Um, so staying home, right? Obviously, you're still you know only in your second year here at Miami, but you, you kind of already touched on your family, the impact that they had on you growing up. Mm -hmm. How, how important has it been to be home and mm -hmm. get them to be able to come watch you come to practices and things of that nature? Yeah. I mean, honestly, I mean, it's really just like I tell everybody, I mean, that's a dream come true. I mean, just growing up, you know, being a, a Miami hurricane fan and my whole family being a Miami hurricane fan. I mean, it was really like a no brainer really coming and staying home just, being close to the family, everybody could come out and watch and, you know, just bringing my family close to a team they always watched on TV and a team they always rooted for, just being able to bring them close and then be right here, can hold a U in their hand, hold a helmet, be around the team. Like, I mean, it's really a dream come true for everybody, the whole family. But, I mean, that always was just something, you know, I wanted to do and 
always wanted to be a hurricane. So I got to tell everybody, I'm I'm just a fan that's on the team. Like I'm a fan that's in the huddle, getting the plays. So I mean, it honestly, just it brings out more in me because I'm not just just a player on the team. I'm a fan and I'm a player. So I'm getting it's the best of both worlds. I'm um I remember growing up just when I'm watching the games, when I was a young and just looking at the TV and watching the you, I'm screaming at the TV and and just getting hyped when things happen, uh, getting mad when things go wrong. So, I mean, now just being able to be on a team and be right next to the team and make plays and miss plays. So it's just, it's just, I mean, a dream come true. And, and just me being that, that fan player, just right there and being close and just making everything happen and just wanting everybody else to be better. Cause I want my team to be good. I want my city to be happy. I want my city to be turned up. So now I got to push it out of everybody. I'm going to get out of everybody from down here. I'm going to get out of everybody who come from out of state. We finna get out of everybody because this is my hometown. I want my hometown to be good. So not everybody got to work just like I'm working. And I think that's why the fans love you, man. You hear the passion in your voice when you, you know, whether it's on Twitter and the interviews and, and just the way you play, right? It's evident mm-hmm. on, on the field. So that's 100% why you're a fan favorite. Uh, growing up, I mean, was it always football? Did you, what other, you know, did you play any other sports or were you just like set on football the whole time? I mean, growing up, it was really just, it was football, football, football. Cause I mean, growing up, like I had cousins who, you know, they really paid the pipeline and my uncles and my dad, they all played football. Then my cousins grew up, they playing football and just growing up and playing backyard football. We back there hitting each other, knocking each other over, just making each other tough. And then growing up playing, you know, little league football, I always played the age up. So I always played with older guys. And then like, I mean, it just, it really got the best out of us. So it really was always football. I mean, I got to high school. It was still always football, but I know I played around with volleyball a little bit. Um, okay. One year, just the football team just came, got on the volleyball team and just start playing around. But I mean, it was, it was really more of a fun thing, not more no like a sport, but it was just a fun thing for us. Wow. But I mean, it really just all been football, but that's really what my family come from. And so it was just really football, football, football kind of was instilled in us growing up. And it was always the University of Miami and the Dallas Cowboys. So this yeah. just was always like how we grew up just on football. And man, you're strong because when you're growing up, some of these Canes teams, they 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 weren't winning national championships. I, I was lucky. I was about nine years old when Miami, eight years old when Miami won their last national championship. So I still got a taste of it. But you're a real fan because you didn't grow up in the in the heyday. Yeah. But you still, I'm sure that the U documentary when that came out, <laughs> yeah, all over, all over it, <laughs> yeah. Ray, Ray, a couple more things about football before we get to off the field stuff. But mm-hmm. you talked about growing up, you were a running back, right? I mean, that was yeah. even in high school, even that's <laughs> that's pretty much what you played. So the transition, I don't think a lot of people realize. Yes, you're an athlete, right? But it's more than just getting you the ball at the wide receiver position and going right there's a lot that yeah. that you've had to learn at yeah. that position um so just talk to me about how that transition has gone and how comfortable you feel there now yeah so i mean you know growing up you know little league played fo- i played running back so i mean the transition was more so you know it wasn't a simple you know transition i know i got to high school and dabbled more into playing a slot position and wide receiver and just being moved around playing everywhere but honestly i mean it's a lot of just, you know, terminology, route depth and and just being fluent with your route running. But, I mean, honestly, being able to play that running back position and then going to our receiver, once you catch the ball, you turn into a running back. So now you're harder to tackle. Now you see holes in the defense that, you know, a lot of people who just play wide receiver only solely maybe wouldn't see because you come from having that vision and, and being able to see them little slight creases and hitting it. So, I mean, at receiver, once I catch the ball, I see a crease, I'm going to hit it. And I know I'm able to split that and go school. But that all come from just dabbling into running back and, and playing, you know, special teams and doing things of that nature. You're able to see things that you maybe couldn't see. So, I mean, it's a it's really a blessing being able to, you know, go from playing running back to playing receiver because in the long run, it, it helps you because now once I, you know, master everything else, once that ball in my hand, I mean, it's over with because now I see all the little things that, you know, the, um, the you know, solely wide receivers maybe want to see. But then, too, now, you know, you used to linebackers and bigger people tackling you. Now you got DBs trying to tackle you who really don't want to tackle anyway. So now it's like, I'm going to go score. I'm not going to let this guy tackle me. Then you got that mentality that one man not go tackle me. So now you're trying to break every tackle. And no matter how big, how small you is, you got, it's no discrimination. You're going to go hit that thing. I'm going to run you over. I'm going to try to shake you. I'm going to outrun you. 
And then solely when it comes to blocking, you had that running back position. You know, you got to block. You got to step in there and block. But now I'm blocking guys that's on the little end. These these little DBs out here, I'm going to go put my hands on them. Y'all think I'm small. All right, I'm going to put my hands on you, and I'm going to take you where you don't want to go. So, like, you know, just have it. It really brings that dog, men, you know, dog mentality out of you because that's what you got to have. So, I mean, honestly, I mean, it was it was really, like, a helpful, you know, you know, situation for me. I want to ask you about your time at Edison, right? Obviously, we're in the era where everyone's transferring, right? And mm -hmm. and there's a lot of programs I'm sure that wanted you to go, oh. go. I, you know, I, I already know how it is. Right. Mm -hmm. So you were loyal, you stayed, you stayed there. Right. And obviously it all worked out in the end. Mm -hmm. So just talk about your experience over there at Edison. And I yeah. mean, kind of being able to be loyal to them and, yeah. and sticking it out with them as well. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I grew up on loyalty. I mean, loyalty is like something that runs deep in our family. Like that's one of the biggest things. So, I mean, I played for a park who a lot of people would say, um, a little league team who a lot of people would say, man, that team wasn't good. Come play for the Ravens or come play for, um, you know, Grand Cherry or come play for, you know, some of these teams. But I always stayed at my park. You know, I had people reaching out to me since little league. Hey, man, come over here, come over here. But I always stayed loyal to my park. So being loyal was, like, easy to me. I got to high school. I'm with Coach Luke. I'm with, you know, Miami Edison. I mean, I was at Miami Edison. I was at Miami Edison. Like, I didn't listen to the outside noise. I didn't listen to nobody else. I, you know, and I always said my whole mentality going to Edison was, okay, I know I could go to Central and play. I know I could go to Northwestern and play. I know I could go to all these big schools and play. But why I go over there and just be another guy? I'm going to go to Edison and wanna, I want to make history. If I win as a, a state championship at Miami Edison, I'm making history. My name in the history books forever. People go remember, you know, Ray Ray Joseph. And, you know, it's not just I'm at Miami Central. I'm at Northwestern. I'm just I just was another guy on that team or I just was another good guy on that team because, you know, they had so many guys. So my whole mindset was I'm going to do something at Miami Edison where, you know, a lot of things ain't happen. So I'm going to come over here and try to make a lot of things happen and, and, and make that team and the head coach and Miami Edison name be stamped in the books. And, you know, I was a big part of it and my team, you know, was a big part of it. So that really was my whole mindset going there. And, you know, that's what I was all about. So. When all them coaches were dabbling in, trying to talk to me and trying to get me to come up to work, nah, man, I ain't even texting you back. I ain't looking at it. I'm not feeling, feeling to you. Nonsense. I'm finna just stick to my team and, and win it out with my team. Because what I look like, you know, hurting my team by, you know, just getting up, leaving. Like, I didn't been here. I was a motivation to a lot of kids on that team. I was a, a light to a lot of kids on, them team, on that team. I helped a lot of kids get better on that team. So, I mean... I wasn't finna just get up and leave because I would have been selfish with me. Let me help these guys. Let me bring some of these colleges out here to see these guys and and, and help them guys get opportunity to, you know, be able to go places and let their dreams come true. So let me stay here and, and help these guys instead of trying to go to these stacked teams and just make it more stacked. No, I'm going to stay somewhere and just put on for, for my team who I'm with. Right, no doubt. Let's talk about Kane's connection a little bit, Ray Ray, uh, and, you know, some of the things that they've done for you, obviously. Uh, in your time working with them i mean honestly it, it, it really just been a blessing i mean they they have helped us you know so so much i mean from just learning things that you you really don't even learn in school so just learning like financial literacy and just learning things that taxes and stuff like that you don't even go over that that's missing from high school and and stuff that you know should be taught but it's not taught and you get to college and things of that nature and you learn this stuff and, you know, you know, Kane's Connection help you, you know, learn that stuff and, and help you understand, you know, how to pay taxes and, and how to use your money and, and, and how to just handle how to, how to handle being a grown man, just stepping into the real world, basically. And I mean, that's honestly a blessing. And, you know, you're able to help your family, you're able to help the community, help the, you're able to help give back. And I mean, it's just something that, you know, could, that really takes your, your game and your life to, ne to the next level. Yeah, very well said. I mean, again, Canes fans, you could sign up for Canes Connection. Go to canesconnection.com. Ray, Ray, a few more things here before I let you go. Off the field, right? When you're not sleeping in the facility and hitting the jugs machine at 3.30 in the morning, uh, when you have some free time, what are some things that you enjoy to do? I mean, honestly, I'm really just like a, a family guy. So, you know, I you know, I take a drive home and and just go back to my old roots. Go back to my, you know, my um, my uncle house and sit in the backyard in the patio. With my cousins live, talk. My uncle watch, you know, watch some sports or you know, watch boxing. We do things like that. Barbecue, get on the grill. So you know, I'm a big family guy. So you know, I just you know like to go back and just be around my family and just hang out with my family 
that's really like really like because I'm not really a go out type of guy and all that. So you know, I'd rather just go back and go back with the family. And if I gotta go back to Edison and just show my face and you know say what's up to them and talk to the guys and just you know tell them like what I had to do to get where I'm at and in this position and just get them guys motivation. Like that's what I'm about. I'm more about helping other people and just helping the community and being being with my family more so than anything else. Like when I'm not here, you know, making myself better. You know, that, and that's the important stuff. I have to follow up though. Who's your Who's your favorite boxer of all time? Oh, I'm, I might have to say. Uh, see, I really got three, okay. but you know, give, you gotta say. Give them to me. Give them to me. Rank. I'm gonna say rank. I'm just and, look, Muhammad top. Ali, okay. Mike Tyson, and I'm gonna say Floyd Mayweather. Okay. Yeah. That's that's valid. Now, now, <laughs> now that you threw Mike Tyson's name out there, is this fight gonna actually happen with him and Jake Paul? And what do you think is gonna happen? I need your prediction. <laughs> well, I hope it happened, but I mean, you know, if it happened, uh, Mike Tyson got him all the way. I mean, this man, I watched, I go on Instagram, all I see this man throwing hits at his trainer, and I mean, his trainer is, I, I, I pray for his trainer the way he be getting hit by Mike Tyson. That just the power that he have with him being at that age is is insane. So. I mean, man, I, oh, Paul in trouble. That's all I can <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll end with this uh, right here, Ray Ray, that, that wide receiver room, right? There's a lot of returning faces, yourself, X, Jacoby, Isaiah, you know, the list goes on, right? Yeah. Just talk to me about how you feel that room is coming together right now um, as a whole. Oh, honestly, I mean, we just getting each other better. Like, I mean – like we so like dialed in and just just comfortable with each other, comfortable coaching each other, getting on each other, and you know it's it's just like you really it's to the point where like I don't want to let this dude down who next to me. So it's like we just all hungry to get each other better. Like I'm literally I watch X over and over and over. I go in the film and just watch the things he do, how he getting open and and things of that nature. Just helping myself get better but by him doing the things he do he helped me get better and by me doing the things i'm doing I'm helping some of these other dudes get better so i mean we all just helping each other get better and we just i mean we attacking it every day because i mean when it comes to practice and you know one-on-ones and all this we don't want to lose we don't want to be the guy that everybody else winning but you losing no nah, everybody gotta win so it's like we we to a certain extent we hard on each other but we hard on each other in our way that we get each other better and we understand that we know how to take it and I mean that only just go make our room keep going through the roof. So I mean, that, that room, the room is crazy, and I feel like we all go be able to back each other up. Like all us are starters. Like that's that's to the point where we get in because the starters is making everybody else starters because we just all working to get each other better and, and and just pushing each other. So when them guys, you know, when it's time for them to go, it's no drop off. Everything is still looking smooth. It's still flowing because we all even if you run it with the twos or the threes you you practicing like you're one you in your mindset I'm, this the ones I'm out here with the ones and, and you and you running hard and you working hard you know just working to be better and better and better each and every day and, and I mean it's everybody got their own process and and we all you know conscious of each other process and we you know if I was in that process stage before I know how to talk to Nakar or, jo, or jo, Jojo and tell them like hey man I was in that process too this is how you handle it this is how you could do it you know and, and, and just to help them out and give them guidance and things of that nature so honestly we all just getting each other better because we all want to see each other succeed. So I, I actually have one more question. I lied. I need <laughs> the four hundred meter four by one. I guess I don't know what what is the four right? Yeah, I got you. I need the the Canes football team <laughs> out of that. <laughs> Ooh, Chris Johnson. Okay. Me. Nakar is running. Okay. Nakar is a blazer. And the last one. Ooh. Dang, you got me thinking now. I'm trying to think who'll be blazing in practice. I probably have to go Rob Robbie. Robbie Washington. Okay. Robbie Washington. But I mean, it's a lot of it's, it's some fast dudes I could name. It but like, like the top, it seems like you were pretty quick on the top three. On though. the top three, yeah. Because I mean, it's some it's some dudes that could fight for that full spot. Because you got like, you got Robbie Robert Stafford. He he could run. Yeah. Like it's some dudes that could really run. Even um some of them new backs we got could run too. So I mean, Hellcat, man, yeah. we got yeah yeah like we got some speedsters. So it's like, dang, I got you thinking there though. Yeah, you got me thinking. I might have to, <laughs> listen, I'm, I'm gonna have to bring this up to uh to some of the guys you mentioned too. So yeah, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> and then I'm sure there's some other guys who'll throw themselves in the mix too. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Right. yeah.
<laughs> Ray Ray Joseph, man. Awesome talking to you today. Again, this was with the Canes Connection. Uh, but appreciate your time, man. And like you said, man, you're a fan who's lucky enough to wear the uniform with a whole lot more talent than the real fans, man. So <laughs> <Yes, sir. laughs> appreciate your time today, Ray Ray. Yes, sir. No problem. Thank you.